All right, hello and welcome to In Conversation. Um, with, and on this show, we bring you all the big interviews with your favorite personality. My name is Julia Gilwa, and I will be here today with your Asamoetan, our Asamoetan, and everybody's Asamoetan. The first African schools, and I'm six schools are the World Cup and also Ghana's all time ghost Flora. He's been there, he's done that, and still doing it. So he's many things, but football always comes first. And that is what has exactly led us here tonight. So welcome, Asamojan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Julius, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? As you can see, we are we are locked up. Um <laughs> Coronavirus is um is real. So what I want to advise everybody is like we should stay home because it's very, very important, you know. So as you can see, I'm home. So let's get it going. Let's see what we can we can do here. And um, of course, you know, maybe just brings excitement. So as I said, let's see. Okay, it's 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 a pleasure to have you um, you know that to even agreeing to do this. You've had countless requests um have you here. So it's good we have you here. We have lots of questions for you. First of all, let me ask you, how are you keeping up in this time of lockdown? Um yeah, it's been it's been difficult, you know. Um yeah, but uh, like business wise, everything like everything is slow but you know our health is very very important you know so we have to um abide uh by the rules of the government by the rules of the president like everybody which i think everybody um agrees with what is going on because our health is very very important you know but what else can i do you know um everything has been slow but um every time i wake up I make sure i do some exercises um at home i call some I call like two friends because of the social distance thing. So we have to just um, do some exercises and um, yeah, but we are coping. We are coping. We are coping with it. Uh, so I was going to ask you, take us through your typical daily routine under the lockdown. When you talk to your friends, what exactly do you do? Um, nothing really. Um, I just watch movies sometimes when when I wake up. Um, there's there, there's um, a hill down my my gate. You know when I get out from the gate, you know, there's a hill down there. So sometimes I go there and then I climb it. You know, for like exercise. I do exercise and then from there I come home, be indoors, like, watch movies. I like comedy, so I always like to watch comedy. And then also boxing, you know, that is what I try to do all day. You know, sometimes be on the phone with my friends, we, we chat and then um, uh, we talk about life. Sometimes, uh, and what is going on is, is real. Like, we always talk about this corona um, virus thing going on around the world, you know. So, um, I try to ask questions, you know, when I'm on the phone, like, what is going on and stuff. And, that is what is going on right now. We have to accept it, you know. So that is that is what we do. And um, you said you watch movies, comedy movies, boxing. What what tell us in what type of comedy movies that you watch? Um, I watch this Ghanaian comedy um movies like um. Sometimes I do remember um Bob Santo. I just click go on YouTube play Santo. I just remember those guys who make me laugh during, when we were growing up. Coming back to Yaku and uh, yeah, Lewin, um, Kweku Menu, all these guys. And sometimes um, I just type um, Nigerian stand-up stand -up comedy. I watch their comedians. I type Ghana, Ghanaian com comedians, like the stand-up comedy. Um, that is what I do all day. You know, I like to watch all these things just to laugh. <laughs> but let's um, jump straight into 
from youth football. We have lots of lots of questions for you, but youth football remains um, something that we are passionate about. We saw that a lot um, this year, even last year and this year as well. How far do you want to go with that initiative? Um, can you come? Can you come back with, with the question again? Because, um, okay, so I'm asking you, youth football is something that is really passionate. Um, you're passionate about. Mm. We saw that last year, this year as well. How far do you want to go with that initiative? Yeah, um, for me, it's, it's very important. You know, um, that's where I started from talking about the grassroots football. Um, when I talk about grassroots football, um, right now we've got a lot of academies um, going on. People set up academy football, academy, and then um, yeah. But um, I was, for me, I started with the coast level. You know, um, during that level, this coast level, that is where I started. You know, a lot of players who played for the national senior national team. Um, they started from the coast level. It's like, um, I found out there's no more coast. There's no more coast football in Ghana, you know, and that is something I'm planning to do. I want to bring back um, the coast um, to Ghana, you know, to be an ambassador or something, you know, to make sure I promote uh, coast football because... We had the Steven Appears, we had the Lion King things, myself, Sulu Tari, my Pelletian, all these guys, the legends, Abedi Pele, Tony Ebo. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they all played in this coast level. But right now, yeah, uh, we're in a different era, which I do understand. You know, the, everything has changed, facilities now. Everybody wants to play <laughs> on the green grass, you know, on the ice to turf. Everybody wants to play. But we started playing in the sun you know we are playing we're playing we're playing on the sun traveling here and there playing and it was more fun and you could you can see the fans around the field like very close to you even if a fan shout at you you feel it you hear the fan like somebody criticizing you. that is why i grew up not to uh be bothered about criticisms you know uh, you no know, it boosted my confidence a lot you know because coast food, um, uh, coast footballers really helped me you know coming back to the uh, 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 premier league coming back to the premier league i was already confident because I've, I've 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 seen it all i saw it all when i was playing the coast you know fans attacking you on the field so i, I wasn't scared of anything again so me being coming to the Premier League, I was already confident because although I was very, very young at that time, but I saw it all when I was playing the coast. So I feel like that is what I want to do. You know, I want to bring the coast football. You know, I think it, it will help. Okay, now we, we spoke about how coast football it made you a better person and also mentally strong. Talk to us about how it will involve you in the family. Yeah, because um, as I said earlier, um, <laughs> in coast in coast football, like the opponent, the, the fans of the opponent, they can just say few things to you that will make you upset. They they can say anything, can disrespect your family. They can do anything. They can say bad words to you. Some they even even come on the field. They come on the field to say things to you, just to provoke you do things. Now, it's, it was crazy. And I'm sure there will be viewers listening to me. I'm sure those who knew who, those who knew that time how close football was it was really crazy. And it was really fun. We really enjoyed it. You know, especially when you score, when you score a goal, everybody comes on the field. Everybody will even come on, on the field and come and celebrate with you and then they go back to their normal position. They just stay there. You know, it's it was crazy. Even the linesman, sometimes the opponent, they will not even allow the linesman to flag it if there is an offside. They just, it, it's like it was fun. It was 
although it was crazy, we, you don't see those things now, but it was fun, fun to watch. It was very, very, it was fun to watch. So I grew up seeing all these things. So if I see things like this, I don't, I don't bother. Like it makes me, I'm already, I'm already mentally strong. That's all you, you, you all know. Sometimes people sit down, they ask questions like, like, how does he do it? Like for all these things, like, how does he get through all these things? You know? Because I've I've seen it all when I was a kid. And um you your time being in the Ghana Premier League, how was the experience like? So I have questions here. If you want to play for Praha Kabuk or Protocol. But before that, talk to us about your time in the Ghana Premier League. Briefly. Yeah, my, my time in um, the Ghana Premier League, you know, we had quality players like we have great great players in the premier league at that time you know um a lot were in the national team legends you know when, when you when you talk about my time we had the dumbbotties we had the Chastillers, we have um uh joe henrich a lot of great great players you know um i i didn't meet um the Ishmelados and also before i didn't meet them in the premier league I think I played a bit with um, Emmanuel Soiko for. He was a great player. You know, I, I saw quality players in, in that league. Me coming to the Premier League at the age of 17 years, although I was 17 years, but because of where I played and because of what I have been through during the coast level and everything, I was more confident because um, I would say. If I say I was experienced, I'll be like, people would think like I'm being too bad. I think I was, I was ready. I was ready even coming to the Premier League at the age of 17 years. I was ready. So I was able to fit into the Premier League as if I played, I played like 10 years already. Because that was the first season. And it was the only season I played in, 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 Ghana, in Ghana Premier League. That was in the 2003 season, you know. I was able to fit in very, very easily. And I was scoring goals. For me, I regret not being the top scorer because that time I was, I was just, I was traveling, I was like going for trials. So I didn't play most of the games, but I finished in, in, in the scoring chart. I think uh, Shaibu, Yaku, uh, Shaibu Yaku was the top scorer. And then Kojo Poku. Um, was the second, and I placed third. But I still, I still say, if I had played all full games, I think I would have been a top scorer in the 2003 Premier League. And um, I have a question for you. Saying, um, let me just look for you. Saying, would you want to play for Kwan Hatsubo or Kumasi Asante? Um. <laughs> It's, 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 it's an obvious question. You know, you, you know the answer already. No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know the answer already because I've said it a couple of times. You know, um, Akraso Folk is a team that I respect. Great club, biggest, one of the biggest club in the in, in country. You know, um, I've, I've supported Kumasi Santiago since I was a kid. So now, you know, um, I even said to myself, I had to play for Kotoko. But I couldn't have, I didn't have the chance to play for Kotoko before um, traveling um, outside, you know. Um, but I've said it that I have to wear the red shirt before I call it a day. So I've answered your question. <laughs> no, this that question was from Asante Kobia. So clearly, I hope you've answered um, his, his question. And this one will be moving into the national issues as so. well. But this question is, um, you've set many records in your career. Is there that one thing that you don't have? That I don't have? Yeah. In terms of football or what? In terms of football. Um, yeah. Um... For now, um, I've been, uh, what bothers me a lot is um, I've been won, um, won any trophy with the, with, the, with the Black Stars. 
you know, um, since 2003, you know, I've, I've got the bronze medal, I've got the silver, you know, but I want the gold. You know, that is, that is what uh, has been bothering me till now. But life goes on. That is, that is what I haven't gotten so far. And that is what I want. So then meaning you are not you are not hanging your boots anytime soon. No, I mean no. <laughs> it it looks like people people want to retire me. People want to retire me. <laughs> but <laughs> like people want to retire me. People want to retire me. But no, I'm not I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. You know, um uh, I had um a couple of injuries. You know that I'm, I'm I'm getting back. I'm now okay. Um, I've added a bit of weight. You know, I need to lose weight. I need to train and get back to my normal shape, and then um, we we'll see what happens. But I haven't retired yet. How how many more years do you think you can play? Um, it depends how um my body responds to training. You know, um, the dedication is still there. You know, for me. What will make somebody quit football is the dedication. Because sometimes you wake up and then you feel like I don't want to train. And that is where you you find out. Like that is where you will know I'm getting to the end of the career. Because sometimes you don't want people to tell you what to do. To wake up at six o'clock, to wake up at ten o'clock, and then tell you. Uh, 12 o'clock you still have training or 3 o'clock you still have training you have to go and when you start thinking about these things like ah, me I won't go I, that is where you, you, you say hey that's, that's, that's the end the time, the time is the time is now you know, and I haven't felt these things like unless maybe when I'm injured I feel like okay I need some time but when I'm okay, I program my training, like, hey, I have to wait and go sometimes. But if it's time for me to go to training and I sleep, I feel like, oh, uh, next time, next time. And I, I, I forget it. So we're still, we're still gonna have John around for the next two to three years, hopefully. I, I don't know, I can, I can just wake up I can just wake up tomorrow and then I'll say that's it. You know, but for now, I'm I still feel good in my body. You know, despite having a couple of injuries and there, but it's it's part of the game. You know, we've seen young players get constant injuries. You know, um it's it, it happens in football. You know, sometimes people even jump into conclusion or say, Oh, he's old, he cannot do that, he cannot do that. Which is a normal thing, but as in how I feel, I still feel I have a lot to um, prove. I, I still think um, I have a lot to do on the field because I see certain things. I feel like, hey, I can still do it. So nobody can retire you. No, nobody, nobody can retire me. Um, a lot of people have tried. A lot of people have tried. So I always say to myself, no, I have to call it a day. Nobody has to retire me. Because um, I've, I've seen it all and um, I feel like I'm gifted. You know, um, when I'm on the field, things that people find so difficult to do, I just do it easily. You know, it doesn't mean I'm being arrogant or something, but it's something that I've, I've done from when I was a, I was a child till now. So I feel like it's not it's not a luck. It's not it's not luck. It's something that I work for, and it's something that I feel like it's from the Almighty. So I feel confident when I'm saying things. Interesting, but John, because we are talking about national team and everything so it's just right for me to ask you 
What exactly were your issues with the handling of mantis around the black star? And do you sometimes feel no one listened to you? For me, um, um, what I'll say is, um, when I was when I was the captain of the team, like yeah, when I talk, when I talk, people do listen. Everybody listens to what, what I say, you know. Um, but I don't, as I said, as I've, I've said that before, that um, I don't know what is at the back of people's mind. You know, sometimes you you say things. They will listen. They will do the right thing as you say. But behind you, they might say different things, which I don't know. But for me, everything I say, I see people doing it. I see everybody doing what I say. So that is where um, I take the posit uh, positivity from. Because if I say this and you don't do it, that is where I'll say, hey, you, you don't respect me or something. But when I say things... I think everybody does it, you know, uh, the young ones, everybody who was around me, everybody does it, everything I do. You know, it's, it's, it's a normal thing. People even do, people do co-concern. Me, sometimes I also do co-concern. You also do co-concern. You, you, yeah, when we were, when we were at, in, in school, in school, you see a teacher, the teacher will do everything. You say, yes, sir. Do that. You say, yes, sir. When the teacher goes, you say, oh, this teacher, why? It's just, it's, it's, it's normal, you know. I don't look at that side. I look at what I see in front of me. So, yeah. Yeah, but what what exactly were your issues? You were talking about the team. What exactly were your issues um, with the handling of matters around the black class? Um, I don't I don't get it. Just go 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 straight to the to the to the, to the point. No, but that's, I'm asking you how things. Um, were handled around the black side. Were you happy with it? What exactly were your issues? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about the, the captaincy issues. That's what you want to say. Yeah. Um, for me, I had no problem uh, taking a captain for me to uh, my colleague, you know, but how it was done was my issue. How it was done. You know, because for me, I think we were personally. I was preparing for a tournament, which is a normal thing. Everybody was preparing for a tournament, and if a coach had already made his plans, thinking uh, because of my injuries, I wasn't part of the team, and then all of a sudden I get well, and then I start scoring goals, and then. The person had no option than to put me in the team. Me being the captain, and man to the tournament, you don't decide. Like it's, it's, it's something that for me is it's, it's, it's not it's not it's not necessary. You know, for me, it's not it's not necessary because um for me the issue I had with the with the, with the coach about his decision. Was like okay. I'm the captain of the team. You, if you think I'm not um, part of your team, I'm not uh, in your plans. Just take me out of the team, and then go with your team. You know, because for all these years, I'm the captain. And even if you want to be smart, and I'm not part of the team or maybe you want to stay with the captain don't put me on the field if you want um andre to be the captain andre can be the captain anytime even when i when when i'm when i'm injured andre is the captain which is obvious he was my assistant and then i'm not part of your plans take me there if you want to take me there don't put me on the field so my question was i asked so what if I'm on the field? What is going to happen? He said, even if I'm on the field, Andre is still the captain. And I said, okay, so 
is it the right time to do this without even telling me anything like months before this is not the right time to do this okay then i didn't um i didn't understand why he did that i don't blame andy for being the captain because he's also got the qualities and he has the qualities he's got everything he knows how to speak he knows how he knows how to speak to the players but my problem was the person who made the decision i think it was it was the timing was wrong okay the timing, but, was, the timing was wrong but um frank jr one need to ask you in relation to what you're talking about he wants me to ask you your decision after what happened your decision to retire from the national team after the incident was it right for you for me it was right for me it was right for me it was right for the team uh because i told him listen i told the coach i'm hurt about your decision and i'm not somebody who tries to um take my anger by for people to see my my anger in the camp which will even bring more confusion in the camp so the best thing to do is to go out from the team have your peace of mind have the players around you and then we can all support the country i said this wholeheartedly i told him this is my decision better take me out from the team because I don't want the situation where I go to the camp and people see me like isolating myself because I'm upset and everything. So I was even helping him to make his job easy for him, you know. And then he told me to think about it. And I said, okay, I'll think about it and I'll get back to him. So I thought of it and I was like, no, this thing is gonna, it's not going to help. That's why I decided to um, retire uh, from the national team, you know. Um, after I had uh, a couple of calls from everywhere, including His Excellency, you know, um, and their, their explanation and everything um, made sense to me. So I had to just think about it. And then uh, I think it was a good thing. And after I forgot about everything, honestly, before God and man, I forgot about everything, the, the anger and everything, everything was just cool. So when I went to the camp, I was the one even making people laugh. I was the one making the camp lively, like as as always. You know, I was okay. I, I came back to myself. If you could see, we were acting comedy movies for people to to laugh in the camp and, and stuff. You know, so after that issue, when I got to the camp, everything was okay. I had no pro issues with anybody. I was fine. How is the relationship with um Christian? Are you happy? He's no more the coach of the black class. Um, that is not that is not my decision. Um, it's the decision of the um, of the FA. You know, I've been spoken to him in a while, um, but it's cool. Um, anytime I see him, we will have our normal chat, our normal jokes, and everything. But for me, honestly, I think the relationship is a bit um, broken because of uh, what happened. And I think, um, I don't know what I, it's um, his conscience or my conscience, but the relationship between me and him, um, it's a bit wide because uh, I haven't spoken to him in, in a while, which is a bit strange, you know, because normally we, 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 we do talk, you know, but we haven't spoken in a while. John, do you think you feel um, you feel uh, unappreciated sometimes in Ghana? Oh yeah, that is. It's uh, yeah, sometimes yeah, sometimes yeah. But um, in other way around, I feel like people love me more than the people who don't. You know, you know, which is a balance thing. But I think ninety percent. Of 95 percent of people do love me in Ghana, but you know the negative ones causes more damage than the positive ones. You know, and um, the the question is like me feeling unappreciated is 
you know, the records are there. Things I have done are there. Recently, about a week or two from now, I've, I've just been witnessing people writing positive things about me and then showing my videos and saying I'm the greatest and saying that all sorts of things. I see all these things and I do, have my, I do ask myself, why, why didn't they say this before? When I was in my prime, when I was causing problems for defenders, when I was doing a lot of things, why didn't they say that? Now that we are home, I'm 34 now, people want to retire me. So if, I feel like, oh, okay, they think I'm retired, so they want to say good things about me. Sometimes it feels good, but sometimes I just sit down and I just shake my head and I just laugh. Because uh, sometimes you, you, I, I, I'm also a Twitter fan. I also, I also be on Twitter. I sometimes I see when maybe somebody tweet about Ronaldo. Ronaldo has scored in ten consecutive uh, tournament or ten consecutive tournament. That is where you see a Ghanaian writing. Oh, Asamajan did this, and I do ask myself, why didn't you say it before? You want somebody to praise his hero before you counter the person and then you say, oh, our hero also did this. You understand? That is where sometimes I have a problem. You know that, that the people know the right thing. They don't do it. Still, I don't know, like, but anyway, it's life. I enjoy my interview. <laughs> Any, how, how do you handle all that? Pardon? How do you handle, you've spoken a lot about how people treat you and everything in Ghana, but how do you handle all this criticism? Yeah, the criticisms. Um, okay. Um, you know, in my whole life, when I was a kid, I, I was having everything easy when it comes to football. Like, everywhere I go, I don't say negative things. Although, uh, at the post level, people say things, but I'm the only one who people love. Understand? Um, because of my goal scoring abilities and my charisma and everything, like, till 2008, you know, 2008, that was where, like, I was highly criticized. I was, I was like, what? That was the criticism that really hit me. Like, it was crazy. And it was a game that we won. You know, and I hadn't experienced that before in my, in my whole career since I was at Liberty to, to that time, 2008, um, during the AFCON in Ghana. So I was just asking myself, like, what, what have I done? Like, in a game that we won. So I was really sad. My mom called me. May her so rest in peace. I love her so much. She called me and then she, she was like, she was crying on the phone and she told me in her whole life, she hasn't felt a pain like that before. You know, so like her word touched me. So if you could remember, I decided to uh, book out the camp. I I decided to uh, leave the camp at that time because I couldn't bear it anymore. And I felt like people were being unfair to me. I was young at that time, you know, and, and even that time, I had to sacrifice because I was injured. I was injured and I had to be injected to, to, to just die for my country because I missed the 2006 African Cup of Nations through injury. And then the 2008 was my first African Cup, which was hosted in Ghana. And I didn't want to miss that one. You know, so I had to do everything to, to, to play my first African Cup of Nations in Ghana. And then like, so when the criticism was coming, it was, I felt like it was personal. You know, it was personal. Like, people were bashing me. Like, it was personal. So, me being inexperienced at that time, I, I, I was down. I was down. That, that, was the, that was the first time I was down. And that really, really taught me a lesson. And for me, it has made me a very, very strong man. So, now. Okay. okay. John, we have a lot of questions. We are now going to put some of the questions to ask you. And this is coming from... Um, he's asking, so we are fast forwarding to 
2010 World Cup. Mm. He said, please, um, just one question for Sabudan. Did Apia ask you ask to take the penalty? Did Apia ask you to allow him to take the penalty? No way. No way, because I was the first penalty kick of the team. You know, um, even if Apia had the ball, he would give he would give the he would have given the ball to me. Because I was the one shooting penalties at that time. Every penalty I was the one shooting, you know. But I, I, I don't blame people because there was a caption. I remember after the World Cup, there was a caption like he like showed his fingers when I was like that, he was showing his fingers. He was rather motivating in that picture. He was telling me, listen, don't even say you are not going to for the penalty shooter. You are the best among the team. You are the best shooter in the team. We know what you can do. So just go there and prove people wrong. You know, even his word, his words even motivated me to, to take that penalty. You know, that was where I went to pick the ball. I shot the first shootout and I, I, I scored. So that picture, like, I think it got into people's head and then they started saying a lot of things, which I do understand. You know, when things, when um, some negative happens, that is where people say things. That's where people have their opinion. So I don't blame the person for asking the question. Okay, now this one is also, we are still playing in 2010 World Cup. This one is playing from Kweku Tweet. He's asking, please ask Asamoja and if that penalty mess still haunts him till today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still, it still, it still haunts me. Um, anytime, like anytime I'm alone, it still haunts me till today. I feel like <laughs> the world should go back. The world should go back again and then I can redeem myself. But as I always say, I always tell my friends, listen, uh, this thing will be within me to the, to, to the rest of my life, you know, because it has happened. And um, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I went there um, to save my country. And now, me being saved, me trying to save my country, I've been the, um, how, do you, how do you put it in, 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 in That's English? The <laughs> Come again? You, you've been the villain. Yeah, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm being the villain. I accept it. You know, I know how people feel. You know, and the question I do ask people is, me on the field, how do I feel? You know, me being on the field on that day, how do I feel for missing that um, opportunity, that penalty? You know, but sometimes I just sit down, I assess things, I see a lot of great players missing penalties in... Um, in crucial moments and whether people like it or not um i just say to myself it's greatness it's greatness whether they like it or not i've done what i have to do um and honestly i really enjoyed that World Cup because that was the best year in my career i will say this and say it every time 2010 was the best year in my career but then, talk to us when um, the morning after that game against Uruguay, how was it like for you? Uh, it was it was a disaster. Like it was it was crazy, you know. Um, but I was I was a bit calm because I couldn't sleep the whole night. You know, I was I was crying the whole night till the morning. You know, um, I cried the whole night to the morning. So, in the morning, I was calm. Like, although my face was swollen, you know, um, due to the tears and everything the whole night, um, I was a bit calm because I, I couldn't cry more. Um, I saw the questions. Um, people, I saw on my Twitter, like, I think OTRG asked the question. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I I was calm, you know. I was calm, and I was waiting for um, the other another chance because I knew I could I, I I would redeem myself one day, if not in terms of football, I think in terms of something something might happen because I see myself as a good man, 
um, I'm a good man. Um, I have a clean heart. So I feel like even if I don't do it, my kids will do it one day. And um, also talk to us about your the love and hate relationship you have with um, Ghana fan. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 for me. When you hate me, I don't I don't I don't care about you hating me. But this is a game. We do entertain people, although it's it's, it's passion. You know, people knew me through football. You know except those who know me personally my background you know sometimes people say things like personal things that will hit you because we are human beings we are human beings and sometimes i do ask myself okay and your ball anchor if it's not if it's not our football you you will even say this words to me and sometimes i don't blame them because i just say to myself okay this is what i chose to do so if things go wrong, you have to um, expect all these things. And uh, I'll move on. And talking about the loved ones, the loved ones, when I'm, I be, I'm being mobbed by the people when I go out, I feel good. Like, hey, you've done an incredible job. You've done, people do appreciate you. And the hate, like, to combine those two, do you know how I call it? I call it greatness. I call it greatness because if, if you're not great, people will not even, you not even get a lot of people to talk bad or good things about you. It's, it's a balanced thing, you know. So I call it greatness because everybody wants to hear something about Samoa Jan. People want to hear something about you, you know. So it even motivates me like, okay, I've done an incredible job, especially even, 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 um, our, our president see like a lot of things. People say good things, people say bad things, but at the end of the day, he's the man of the land. You understand? So his greatness, he, he wouldn't gotten that far if he wasn't great. You know. So I see it as greatness. So it's it comes with the territory. It's good. It's a good thing. And um, this question is coming from um, Danka in says, What are the challenges or what challenges um, does he face on the field and outside the field? Um, on the field, I don't, I don't, I don't see any challenge unless um, um, I'm injured and I try to to sacrifice myself because. You know, when you play, when you play through pain, it's, it's a different thing altogether. People don't see it, but that is the challenge. Is I, I fight. Okay, if I was like, okay, this thing I would have done it so easily, you know. But I try my best to do it. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. People don't see that. You know, that is the challenge I do have. But my confidence level, when, I, when I'm on the field, is for me. I think my confidence level is, is amazing. Like because. Um, I'm blessed with a lot of qualities. That's why I'm not scared when I'm on the field because I can jump, I can head, I can dribble, I can kill the ball, I can shoot. I have so many um, qualities when I'm on the field to, to, to score. So sometimes it may go score lose easily for people, but it's not that easy because of the qualities. I have a lot of things that I can exploit on the field. Outside the field, um, Outside the field, you know, sometimes you want to go to places that you feel like when you are you are like you are like a normal guy, you won't go there, you know. But because you are who you are, you cannot do certain things, you know. Uh, sometimes it's good, you know, you enter places so easily, uh, okay. but sometimes it's also a bit frustrating because I feel like. When I was a normal guy, when I was 15 years, I was able to do this. You know, I was on a day, 
on a normal beach day, I can go with my friends to the beach, you know, to work on the sand, do like normal beach day. But now, when I go to the beach, I cannot because you definitely people will start mobbing you. There will be like people around you. They won't even allow you to have your privacy, you know. So these are the challenges sometimes. And it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. Like when people mob you outside, it feels good. You know, but sometimes they 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 do not do it. <laughs> and this question is coming in from David. Um, David Little, he said, um, "Did you ever speak to Dan Wahlbeck to play for Ghana?" Yeah, 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 I remember. I spoke, I spoke to him a couple of times. You know, um, that boy really loved Ghana. He loves Ghana. Um, he loves Ghana. Like every time. He's watching a lot of things in Ghana. Like most of the things going on in Ghana, he knows it. Trust me. Although I haven't seen him for a couple of years, but he loves Ghana. But okay. I feel like I feel like there was more influence on him, you know, to play for England because he grew up there, you know. Because even the week we played against England, he was even contemplating, he was talking about the game. You know, he, so he supports Ghana. He was invited to the national team. And even his first game for England was against Ghana. His, his, his first, his debut for England was against Ghana. You know, but life goes on. But what I'll say is, um, I, I, I tried to convince him, I tried to speak to him. You know, but he made his decision. And yeah. um, I do respect that. But what I'll tell everybody is Danny Warburg loves Ghana. He loves Ghana. He loves Ghana. And um, Parish, Parish P is asking, um, please ask us, Samuel John, what is his favorite goal? <laughs> My favorite goal? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, there were some goals that the, 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 camera, the camera didn't capture. You know, so let's have a once the camera's captured. Which one okay. is the one the camera captured? Um, okay, the goal against America in 2010. Um, yeah, the goal against England, but there was one goal I, I it was the goal against Congo, you know, in the qualification to the, to the 2006. Yeah. World Cup, you know, um, yeah, these three goals. But my okay, people, if you put it out there, people will say uh, it's a goal against America. People will say it's a goal against um, England. You know, so they should choose among themselves. I will take one <laughs> of them. And um, this question is coming from. They want to know what is behind that favorite. Number three dressing. This is coming from Kobe Cole. Why always number three? <laughs> um, my brother gave me the number three shirt. Um, when he was playing for Ghana, he was he was um in the number three, you know, shirt, you know. Um, and I asked him why. I also asked my brother why. And um, he told me is. The Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. You know, three. You know, and then in, in philosophy, um, everything for the third time is acting like you want somebody for the first time, you want a person for the second time. The third time is gonna be action. You know, so that that three is very very powerful. You want to lift something heavy. You count one, two, three before you lift it. You you lift it. So that three is more powerful. You know, so things behind it. I hope I've answered your question. <laughs> yeah, um, Kobiko, I think I think Kobiko had his answer. And this is okay. coming from um okay, the name I'll just mention that Joseph asking, Will you ever play for the Black Stars again if they call you? Um I'm still available. I'm still available. Uh, anytime I'm, I'm giving a call up. I have to um, assess um, my fitness level because playing for the national team is not, it's not that easy. You have to be honest with yourself. You know, um, I'm not 
um, as young as um, 10 years ago, you know, that I can take things for granted, I can sacrifice and then do normal things. But um, I'm not 34 years, although I still have something in me, you know, but I have to, I have to feel my body. I have to see if I, I could do certain things, I have to be 100% fit before I can um, respond to that caller. I'm still available. I'm still available and even ready to score goals. You know? So that, that that one that one is, is, is standard. That one I can I can um hit my chest and say like when I'm hundred percent fit without any injuries and I'm on the field, goal scoring I think um it comes from God, you know, so that wouldn't be a problem. And um John, this question is coming from Daniel. He says that you are the captain. In 2014, during the 2014 World Cup, what role did you play during the Brazil saga? I, I don't get a question. 2014 World Cup. Mm. What role did you play during the saga? Whatever happened? Daniel is asking that question. Yeah, um, there are a lot of things going on. Um, the captain, um, you need to maintain peace. In the camp, uh, in, in, in the camp, you know, people get angry. Things happen, you know. But as the as the, as the leader, um, I, I feel like everybody around that time is mature, you know. And we are all human. We all have misunderstanding. But what I had to do as a captain is to just calm things down, speak to everybody who involved, and um, let things go. I think it's it's it's, it's an easy question to answer. And um, with with everything that happened, do you think you played your captaincy role very well? Yeah, it, it was something uh, beyond my control. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a football player. Um, I'm responsible for players. You know, I'm responsible for the team. You know, but something beyond beyond my control, I'll try my best to to handle it as as a person. But I'm not perfect, you know. But I will always um, do my best to 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 bring peace, you know. And that is what um, I did. Fifi Fifi Hansen is asking, um, do you think Ethiopia was manipulated to make certain decisions in the Black Stars when he was a coach? Um. I don't know. I, it's, it's a difficult question. It's something that I, I cannot um, answer. You know, if I do something about it, I would just say it because I'm a honest person. You know, but honestly, um, I don't know anything about this. And um, this question is coming from. <laughs> they're asking what, what happened to your hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> What has happened to your hairstyle? Why this hairstyle? I just decided to um, cut it down. I just uh, decided to do it because, um, you know, because of the uh, quarantine, you know, my my barber, <laughs> my barber uh, find it difficult. He cannot come to my house because he will be stopped, you know. So I had the opportunity, you know, when when the president announced it, I had the opportunity to to see him for the last before you know so i had to just make sure okay if my hair is long and we are staying home for that long better cut it down so that the more we stay home it, it, i'll get time to to get my hair back you know so i can uh fix it so that was, that was the motive around it so i just because of the fact that because we, we stay in, you know, we're not going anywhere i don't get time to go to the barber shop or you don't get time to come to me to Cut my hair, so I have to just cut it down to have more time to grow. Okay, John, this is coming from um, it's Cheryl. He's asking, How will you rate your captaincy on a field and outside, like, or maybe on a scale from one to ten? How would you rate your captaincy for me? Um, I think, um, I did what I had to do. You know, um, sometimes, sometimes I also feel like people didn't let me enjoy my captaincy 
Because when I was appointed a captain, today you could see, oh, uh, he's fighting over captain. Uh, this one uh, is supposed to be the captain. That one, it, to the extent that um, he put his, his face on the captain armband. Every time it was our captain C. In my time, the other, other people's time, there wasn't something like that. You know? So, I don't see... For me, I think I, I did what I had to do as, as a thing. People will appreciate me. People will not appreciate me. You know? But also, like, my time, I had um, a lot of young players to manage. You know? A young players who... Um, cannot speak when it comes to uh, difficult matters. Let me be one example. Stephen Abia, sometimes people call him as the best captain in, like, in, 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 from, for this decade. He was the best captain from this decade because he had strong people behind him. He had strong players around him that time. Richard Kingston was there. Mike Ellison was there. Sule Muntari was there. Larry Kingston was there. Otuado was there. Name them. I was there. My brother was there. Great, great, like big, big players around that time was there. So even Stephen Apia didn't even speak. Those people were the players speaking. He didn't even have time to speak. You know, because we had strong players at, at that time. Hey, Mike Ellison was playing for... Um, Chelsea, Sule Muntari was playing for AC Milan, Inter Milan, you know, Otoado, Dortmund, you know, you know, that time he had strong people around him, so he was, okay, but my era, we have young players who are scared to, 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 to speak up because when they speak up, they might think they will not be called the national team again. Because they are scared to say something. They see things, but they expect the captain to say. So it was like it was one man doing okay. the job. You understand? I say it's all right, but the backup was not strong enough. That was my challenges I was having as, as, as a captain. But for me, I did what I had to do. I'm no more the captain. So let go. <laughs> what, what is your advice to this? Is coming from um, is it Dita? Yeah. What is your advice to or advice that you give young and ambitious players and why? Come again with a question because the okay. So I'm asking you, um, this is coming from Dita. He's saying, What will be your advice? To young and ambitious players, and why? Um, young and ambitious player. Um, I think you can have the um, ambition, but when you're not dedicated, um, you should forget it uh, because the ambition should be that you have to work towards it. You have to be dedicated. You have to be hardworking. You know, that is why. I'm saying ambition without dedication is not going to work. You know, when you have the ambition, every, everybody, maybe somebody wants to be a president. You have to work towards it. You understand? If you don't work towards it, then you're not going to be the president you want to be. For me, I became what I am today because I work towards it. You know? I'm not yeah. telling anybody to run from school. Sometimes I have to run from school just to go and train. But this is not an uh, advice about advice a youth one. I'm not saying you should run from school, but all I'm saying is an example. When you have an ambition, you have to work towards it. You have to work hard towards it. Um, I don't want to flatter you. I saw you, I saw you, Juliet Bewa, when you were coming up as a journalist. But now look at where you are now. Because 
I see like you really, really work towards it. I remember my first interview I had with you to even speak was the problem because you, you, you were finding it so difficult to ask the questions. But now look how confident you are because you really worked your craft and now you are where you are now. You know, so ambition is there. You want to be like that. That's your ambition. And you have to work towards it. Okay, then thank you very much for that. And you, you've also made us better journalists because any time that we want to talk to you, you're available to talk to us. So thank you for that. But this question is coming from um, this again. He's saying, what belief, behavior, or habit um, has greatly improved your career development? Come again. Um, so someone is asking, what belief, behavior, or habit has greatly improved your career development? Confident. Confident. I'm always confident. I'm always confident. Sometimes people see confident as arrogant. But I'm always confident. And um, I like to challenge myself. I love challenges. You know, sometimes I'll say things that people might think, oh, you can't do it. So when I say it, it's a big challenge to me. So when I say it, people, people in their mind, okay, do it and let's see. That is where behind the scene I work towards it. Because I said it. Okay. I, I said I'm going to go to go school. I'm going to school to go to school. What am I going to do? So I have to work towards it. And then it happens when it comes buying. People say, ah, it's Juju or it's Malango. <laughs> do, you, do you believe in Juju again? <laughs> huh? Do you believe in Juju? Sometimes, you know, when we were growing up, hey, we see things like people doing stuff, these things like you do that. Hey, like people predict, like they do things, and then they'll say, hey, when you're going to score two. You do it and you score two. So I don't know which is which, you know? So like, we grew up, when we grew up, we didn't do, do those things, you know? So um, for me, for me, things that happen exist. Hello, John. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, can you hear me? Okay. So, have you have you have you ever used Juju in your career? Um, I don't know if I can call it Juju because when when um during the court level, something before again, they had um something in the bucket like it's like they put like lavender inside the bucket, like water, you know, which is it smells like it's very very strong smell. You know, like a lavender, like and then you can see some leaves in it, and they will, they will tell everybody to bath. When, when we wear our jersey, they will tell us to bath before we enter the field. You know, so it's a collective thing. If you don't do it, and we lose, they will say you you are the cause, you are the cause of the, the the loss. So that is what we do. Normally, I come last. I come on the last. I'm the last person. So when I come, I say it with my hand. And then I pour the whole water on, on me. <laughs> but we have we have just um, five questions to wrap up. This one is coming from Kobe Cole. He's asking, why did you leave the EPO? And how was the life in the UAE? Um I, I can't hear you. Um, this is coming from Kobe Cole. He's asking, one, why did you leave the EPL? And how was it like playing in the UAE? Um, I, I, I think I've done a couple of interviews about um, this issue. You know, um, I left. I didn't leave the EPL because I wanted to leave. You know, um, I was doing well. Club made an offer. The, the, my club, uh, my former club, which is aligned in the UAE, they made the offer. They made the offer. Uh, it was a loan deal. You know, it's a loan deal for, 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 for six million that time. And then there was an option that if the player decides to stay, the club will add another four million. That was in my contract to make it a permanent deal. So the loan deal came, 
sellout came to me. And then they persuaded me that like they were the, the, the conversation was like, oh, just go there for just one year and then come because we know you can just go for one season and then you come to the Premier League. So it was like they were pushing me to go so that they can have that money okay. because it's it was a good money at that time. Okay. Six million for a loan deal for one season. So they came to me, they spoke to me, and I'm like, does the fans know about this thing? They said, no, okay, yeah, we know how to uh, control the fans. We know how to speak to the fans and everything. And then my personal thing was also good. It was it was huge money, which was also good for me. But I wasn't thinking about that money at that time, honestly. But it was like, because of that money involved, they wanted me to go for just one season so they can have they can make profit out of it. So I also checked my personal thing. It was a good deal for me. I was going there for uh, one season. I went there. I fell in love with the place. Scored goals, did everything. Like, everything was perfect for me. Personally, I have to think about myself. You know? Okay. I didn't know it was, it, it, it was going to happen. I was going there for a deal and then go back. I went there. I fell in love with the place. But how, then, how was that experience? Um, great experience. We had sometimes we say travel and see. Sometimes people see the UAE league as uh, um, easy league. But when you go there, you see it's not it's not that easy. You know. Secondly, it's Dubai. Everything is there. Whatever you want. Like my soul was happy. You know, I was scoring goals every week, and even if you check. Around that year, my goal scoring ratio from uh, uh, in the Black Stars was higher than when I was playing in Europe because I had to challenge myself. People said my career was going to be over. My goal scoring ratio for the Black Stars went higher than even when I was playing in, in, in Europe. So I, I I didn't see anything, but the only thing sometimes I I I, I I miss about it. It really is like, you know, fans, the exposure, you know, great players passing through. And uh, sometimes I see comments like, you have been a legend in Premier League if he has stayed. You know, sometimes this thing hits me, but I just say to myself, life goes on. You know, a lot of players who have played this game, um, who are at home, they don't have nothing to even eat. And I feel blessed, you know, to to, okay. to make to make this decision. And um Danko Danko is asking which club um, have you enjoyed playing? I mean why um because I was scoring like I was scoring goals. I was not having injuries. I was I was enjoying the game. The fans loved me. You know, um, their gifts were coming from every angle. I would say I would say I would say okay. Um, they were spoiling me. They were spoiling me, but that didn't get to my mind. You know, I was I was happy. Like as I said, my my soul was happy there. I was scoring goals, doing everything. When I come to the national team, I was praying. Dubai had everything. I, I was flying my family back and forth, friends back and forth. Life was good. And that is what we, we were doing. Like, our, although outside the field, I was happy. On the field, I was also doing the job. I was scoring goals. I was delivering everything. Dan, we have two more questions for you. This is coming from George Danqua. He's asking, um, what players did you look up to when you were growing up? Um, Ronaldo, the Brazilian. Uh, and then my brother. And um, this question is saying... Um, what does he think about 7-Up um, here? How do you feel 7-Up here? It's coming from 
Is that lab vista or something? Yeah. Um, Steve Rapia, um, he, he had time for the, for the young ones, um, because this time I was, I was, I was little at that time. Um, he was a choir type, he was a shy type, but when you approach him, he, he will open up, like he knows how to interact with people, but he's not somebody who will make the first approach. You know, is I don't know if it's shyness or something, you know, and uh, he's very, very passionate, very, very passionate about what, whatever he does, okay. very, very emotional. Who, who is this? Is coming from Don? He's asking, Who is your best friend in the Black Stars team? Best friend, when is that your best friend? Um, I always say, I was cool with. Everybody, you know, um, I was cool with everybody, but none of them was my best friend. But I was, in my time, I was very close to um, John Boy. And then, um, could you ask could someone? <laughs> yeah. I was very close to them. This is coming from um, Francis Edouard. He's asking, do you have any problem with um, Andre today, are you? No, I don't have um, any problem with Henry. Um, I think people created that impression. You know, sometimes we even laugh about it. Me and him, we really, really, we, we sit down and then we, we laugh about it. You know, because I think people outside have that impression. You know, like we have problems. You know, you don't know um, if you, you, you don't know people's mind. You don't know what they have at the back of their mind. That is what I would say. Okay. You know, I might talk to you right now. I might not like you, but I have to talk to you. You know? So, I see what is in front of me. I don't see what is behind me. Okay. You know? For me, what I see in Andre, I don't have any problem with Andre. Okay. But behind, I don't know behind. Behind, he doesn't know what I also have behind. But what I see... He's a positive guy standing in front of me who loves his job, who is very emotional, who is very passionate about his job, who loves, you know, who who um, motivates people. That is the area I know. Okay. We, we sit down, we rack jokes, we do everything together. But what I say is people try to create problems. People try to create impression. And we are all human. Sometimes we feel it, we see it. Sometimes when you when, when somebody comes to you and you say, Oh, this guy doesn't like you, sometimes you 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 think about it. You think about okay. it. Yeah. And um this um so many questions coming through, but Dan has to go. But this is coming from Dan. He said, What do you want to do after your playing career? I'm I'm already a business, I'm already a businessman. So okay. You might not you might not know what is gonna happen. Um there are so many things happening um, after football. I've seen a lot of footballers doing a lot of things, you know. So you might never know. I'm already, a, mm -hmm. I'm already a business now, a uh, businessman for now. So you might not you know. You plan what's coaching? Happen. Um, honestly, yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get a license because I have the IQ. I have the IQ in coaching. I know how to coach. I can be. For me, I can be a very good coach, you know, but I need to go through the processes. And I think it's, it's, it's part of my plans. Which, which coach would you want to become when you when, when you start coaching? You will see. You see, you see, you see by yourself. Um, you will see. Maybe any coach that you look up to? Um, I have to combine. I have to combine everything. Um, honestly, um, I really like um, Cosmi Nolario because he was the coach who coached me in Alain. He's a Romanian guy. Um, he's not well known in Europe, but this guy, this coach can be great when people finally see him. And um, I learned um, a lot from um, Zalatko. 
the Croatian coach, the one who took um, Croatia to the final. Final of Europe. Uh, he was my coach. He was my coach in um, in 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 Alain. You, you know, sometimes you cannot see people from afar, and then you say, "I want to be like a person." You have to get close. You know, when you get close, you okay. know the kind of person. Yeah. So. Yeah. But but which coach briefly, which coach um got the best out of you as a player, be it Ghana coach or foreign coach, which coach got the best out of you? Cosme, Vladio, Cosme, in a lane. Okay, fantastic. Um, this is coming from Don Lovely. He said, Did any of your kids play and, football? And, and, and once again, uh, hold on. And uh, another coach who brought the best out of me was Antonetti when I was in Rennes. When I was in Rennes, he, he brought the best out of me because my first season was a disaster. Um, I was appointed a coach, and then um, he, he saw my clip. We had a couple of meetings. He told me, you are my number one striker. You are going to play. Make up your mind. Okay. Any, so any I, took of your the, I took that form to the World Cup 2010. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and any of your kids playing football? Yeah, the first one. Oh, talk to us briefly about him. I don't I don't want to talk about my family. When 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 he grows when he grows up, um, everybody will see. Is is he in any academy? Yeah, he's in um an academy in, uh, in the UK. You know, he's he needs he needs to learn um um how to be a bit uh competitive you know his skills he's got everything but he needs to get that competitiveness you know and that is what after he's telling him how he's and that is, is as a father um, um it's my job to do that so he's still young so we will see can, can he be as good as you or even better he always tells me he will, he will be better than me you know so we'll see i will um all the support I have, I have to just support him and then we see what happens. And how do you feel? This question is coming from Dan Chipsa. He said, how do you feel being the um, top African scorer in the, at, a, at a World Cup? I feel great. You know, sometimes when I sit back and uh, I just, even to go to a World Cup, is not an easy task. You know, it's, 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 every, it's every footballer's dream, you know, to even go to a World Cup. And there are a lot of players who have been to the World Cup, you know, who didn't make any impact. But they still even have it on their CV that they've been to the World Cup, which is a huge achievement to go to the World Cup, you know. And sometimes I sit back and I say, hey, I went there and I made an impact, you know. So I feel great, you know, sometimes I sit back and having six goals in the World Cup, I feel great. And where are you going to end your playing career? What club do you wish? <laughs> Cut <the ball. laughs> did, did you say Yeah, come on, yes, I'm but um, okay. you know, anything can happen in life. You know, as I said, sometimes your wish doesn't come true. You know, but my wish to finish my career in Kumasi as Antico Dogo. You know, there are so many people who, uh, uh, when they were kids, they said, oh, I want to be a doctor, but they end up being a nurse. Or they end up being a, a waitress. You know, they end up being hostess. So, it's something I want to do. I want to end up, I want to end my, my, my career in, in Fokodoko. Okay, Dan, before I ask you the last question about music, this question is coming from La Besta. He's saying, how do you feel, how do you feel about not winning the African Best Player before? Um, for me, for me, sometimes I don't know how they voted, but I, 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 I still think I should have won it in 2010 and 2014. Why, why do you say that? 
because I deserved it. I did, I did everything. I was scoring goals. I was on top of my shape. I was doing everything. You know, you can check the stats. I don't know how they rate it. I don't know how they rate it, but why am I saying I should have won it in 2010 and 2014 without saying 2011, 2012, and 2010? Yeah. Because I knew what I did, and everybody saw it. You know, so that is why sometimes I do ask questions. How do they rate it? I don't know how they rate it. But for me, I think 2010 and 2014 should have been my year. Okay. And so you feel disappointed with, with that? Not winning best player on the continent? Sometimes, sometimes, yes. Sometimes I feel like, hey, there were, there were a lot of players who were even better than me. They didn't meet up there, you know. But at least um, I was able to win the uh, BBC African Football of the Year, you know, which is one of my prestige awards in my career. I was I was I was um, second in the Cup Awards. You know, I played second um, behind one of the greatest African players, you know, Samuel Eto. Drogba was third. You know, being among these great great legends, great giants, I still feel proud of myself. I still feel okay. great out there. John, someone wants me to tell you something. Raman Salifu, he's saying, please to end the conversation, tell us somewhere, John. I, Raman, love him so much and wish to meet him. <laughs> tell him I love him too. <laughs> tell him I love him too. I'm sure he's watching, so he said, but finally, John, it's been a while since we had you do music. What is happening? Because people want to listen to some music from you. Yeah, I just, I just, um, I just have to put it on hold because of um, a lot of things that are happening, uh, have happened in the past. You know, but I still do music. I, I still do live band thing at home. When I'm at home. I just call my band. I have a band, you know. So when I feel bored, I just call them. I say, like, hey, let me exhibit my skills. Come and let's do something. You know, and um, yeah, that is what I do. I do love music, honestly. But you might not know. You might not know. I think last two years, um, I featured on uh, Stone Boys' um, Dirty Enemies, you know. So yeah. you might not know. Can you sing a line or two of that of that song? My part. As we wrap up. My part. Yeah, your part. Your part is fine. Which which of our one you want to sing? <laughs> is that Uno better listen to what I say. To what I say. Uno better listen to what I say. To what I say. Listen to what I say. To what I say. Fast forward. Enemies no be God. Enemies no be God. Guy man. No fit to guy, guy man. When I if you start. <laughs> enemies, enemies. Them two get enemies. This year, all my enemies, enemies. Them to succeed. Our enemies are not. Oh, my voice is so bad. I can't. <laughs> I also lost my voice. I also lost my voice because um, I, I I called my um uh my instrumentalist, you know, okay. who plays the keyboard. I sang like two days ago, so I also oh, okay. lost my voice a little. So it's fine. Well, we'll be hoping to get something from you. But as we wrap up on um, this, my question I want to ask you. Is um, do you ever think the Black Stars can win an African Cup of Nations trophy in the country? Yeah, we can win it. Why not? We can win it if we have the mindset. We can win it because football is a collective job. You know, football is a collective work. Um, one one person might go with a positive mind, somebody might go with a negative mind, somebody is scared, somebody is that, you know, that is where the problem lies, you know, you don't know what is inside, but that is why uh, an individual 
work. For example, like uh, uh, like boxing. When I'm a, if I'm a boxer and I'm going to fight somebody, this is myself alone. That is why I can predict I will knock you out round two, round three, because this is me. But football is a collective job. I can say I'm going to score two goals. If we take four goals, I'm out. You know? So that is why I said if we have the mindset and everything, why not? Anything is possible. We can win it. What should we do apart from collective? Um, you've talked about collective. Yesterday, Wakasu spoke about collective as well. So it's something that is running through. But what can we do to win that trophy? We need your support. Uh, politics out of football. Apart from the collective thing and everything that I'm saying, politics out of football. If not, it's going to be the same. That's my honest truth. Because for recent years, there have been a lot of politics in the game, which is not good. John, if you say politics, what do you mean by that? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to um, go into details, but I hope you know what I'm saying. Like, when, it, when if I say I'm going to say, we're going to start all over and all over and all over again. But No, briefly, people are watching you. So when you say politics, if you have to take politics out in order to win the African population, everybody wants us to win the AFCON. So... The listeners who are listening to me, me, I, as Jan, I said politics in football. Uh, that's all I can say. I won't, I won't explain. If somebody wants to know something, the person to see me in chambers, I will tell the person what the politics is about. Okay, Dan, your final words to your fans. Lots of them are watching um, with everything that's been going on. Can you talk to them about how important is it for them to stay at home, to follow the guidelines, wash their hands, and also observe social distancing? You've already said it. You've already said it. <laughs> I need it to come from you. <laughs> you've, already, you've already advised them, you know, so... Yeah, so, so top it's, very, very, it's very, very important, you know. Um, every Ghanaian listening to me all over the world, you know, um, the coronavirus is real. We should take it very, very serious. You know, we should wash our hands, we use the hands and tires. The most important thing is when they say stay at home, stay at home. Me, as a man, look at me, I'm home now, granting an interview. I'm not in the studio, I'm even I'm go to the studio i'm going to the studio. i'll be at home and then, you know um it's very very important you know uh and last time i posted something on my instagram the name free the name free thing. <laughs> it will it will boost your if you, if you, you, just, if you know any new free leave around your area just plug it put it in a um, hot water boil it it's tradition. I think Juliet, you know it. Oh, I do that. Don't worry. <laughs> when you go, when when you 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 go on my um Twitter, I posted a video. Just watch how I do it. Yeah. It boosts the new system, you know. And we are all fighting uh the virus, you know. But it's very very important. We have to stay home. Let's take precautions. As um uh, researchers, okay. everybody is saying, wash your hands. Use the hand sanitizers. Stay at home, keep the social distance, and let's leave everything to God because it's real. You know, as we are here, it's increasing. The numbers keep increasing, which um, is a bit frustrating. But, hey, we are all Ghanaians. Uh, we're going to fight um, the, the, the virus to the end. And one important thing is um, I, I see a lot of personalities doing some donations um i really really um um want to thank them 
not only um, the celebrities. I see a lot of individuals doing a lot of um, uh, donations and uh, stuff. Myself, everybody have done it. You know, my colleagues, football players, black star players, I've seen a lot of people doing. I'll say, God bless you. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's help um, the less privileged. And God bless us all. And um, the, your fans, your fans under our post, they are saying, when are you going to do, um, you are going to give on the time, like, you know, like, do Momo, that one, I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> hey, that, that Momo thing that you post is, you post is that Momo. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, they want you to do Momo, and they want you to do Momo <laughs> on your time. <laughs> They made me. They made me understood the, the, the word Momo because uh, every time I see Momo, Momo, I like. Uh, so, so please give Momo, give credit out. Momo? <laughs> Momo money. And they told me it's Momo money. I said, hey, Momo. So, so do Momo on your timeline. You know, <laughs> do, do some for your fans. Anyway, <laughs> it's all fun. It's all fun. It's, it's all, all fun. fun. So. It's 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 been a pleasure having you. And um, this was really a good one. We are grateful for allowing us to engage your lockdown. And I'm sure many of the people who sent in their questions are also grateful. So, from our TV3, I want to say thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me anytime. You know, we're all serving the country, so we're always here. Uh, thank you for having me. But the okay. moment you have, to, you, have to go, you also have to do the moment. Uh, Dan, so we'll, we'll be waiting. Your fans are waiting. They are saying 50, 20 cities. Your fans are waiting for the move on your timeline. So good luck. All right. Take care. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.